can actually film when it's dark out. I figured out my lighting, kind of, sort of, for the most part. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going over my everyday makeup basket for March of 2018. Now, I just started filming these in January, so I've only done two of these so far. I tried picking like a full face of makeup in the beginning to really put in my everyday drawer and get more use out of, but I found that if I pick too many products and I put them in the drawer, I tend to not reach for all of them as much. So I really kind of pared it down for this month and I really only picked out a few products, not one from each category like before, that I really want to focus on, maybe focus on finishing up, maybe focus on just getting more use out of them, or maybe they're new products that I really want to try out more. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I didn't pick a primer this month just because my skin has been acting up a little bit and I've been using more skincare and I've kind of been jumping around and finding out the right primer to use currently. So let's go ahead and jump into the foundation cocktail that I'm going to be using. I'm actually wearing this on my face today. I mixed in the Marc Jacobs Remarkable. This is in shade 14. And I have the Ordinary Color Serum Foundation. This is in 2.0 Neutral. I have these both mixed in today and I'm wearing them and it's, it's amazing. I have about half the bottle left of the Ordinary and this Marc Jacobs one is practically full and I bought these both quite a while ago. Um, I found that the Marc Jacobs, when I wear it by itself throughout the day, it tends to get really dry, really break down, but the coverage is fantastic. Whereas with the serum foundation, it's really thin, has medium coverage, it feels really nice upon the skin, but by the end of the day, I see like the oily spots coming through on my face, typically around my nose and the middle of my forehead. So I've mixed this together once and I tried it throughout the day. I'm wearing it again today. I'm going to do a full day wear test just to see if I like the cocktail throughout the day as much as I like it when it first applies. Because when you mix these together and you put them on, it just, it's a beautiful finish. Like it's not matte, um, but it's not dewy. It's like a nice satin finish and I'm just loving it. So I am going to put these in my everyday drawer just to get more use out of them. Next for concealer, I have a new one that I've been using practically every day since I got it. It is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. And the shade that I can really use under my eyes is C6. And the shade that I can use around my face, I actually use this shade to carve out my brows. And that's say, Sade. And that's shade C5. So C5 I can use to spot conceal and to carve out my brows. Whereas for under my eyes, I like C6. And C6 is in my opinion, lighter than C5. So I would really like recommend going into the store and looking at concealers because they're just one of the hardest things to buy online. Especially when you have a line like this where the lightest color isn't always like the lowest number. I'm really liking the product so far. I've been using it consistently for about a week now and I haven't found, you know, really anything adverse to say about it other than the fact that you don't get a whole lot of product in here. But for it being so affordable and the fact that I can use like Ulta coupons or Ulta points on it, I consider this product worth it. Let's move on to some face powders. So a face powder that I actually just picked up during the bomb sale is the Sexy Mama Translucent Powder. I have it in my Z palette right here. It's the powder right here. I actually completely panned one of these just just a couple of weeks ago. I bought it from Hot Look last summer and I depotted it the same way, put it in a Z palette and I used it every day. It's the perfect it's the perfect powder. It doesn't look powdery or cakey on the face. It holds up throughout the day. I don't get oily when I wear it, so I use this a ton in the summer. And I saw that the balm was having that sale and I jumped on it. So I actually picked that up along with a couple of other products. One of them is a bronzer that I want to use more. And it's the Take Home the Bronze bronzer. And I have the shade Oscar. So Oscar Bronze. So it's supposed to be an anti-orange bronzer. I really like the tone of it. It's just... Like, it's not a contour powder. Like, it actually is a bronzer. And I might depot this as well and put it in the Z palette, but I just love this packaging. It's adorable. So because the packaging is so cute, I really don't want to depot it right away. I'm going to put it in my everyday drawer just to see if I can get more use out of it. And if I find myself not reaching for it as much as I would like, I probably will depot it. Another face powder that I've had in my drawer for quite some time is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. I've hit quite... A lot of pan right there in the middle. My goal is to use this up by the summer. 
I can use this as an all-over setting powder or even if I built it up it could be like a really really subtle highlight but what I like to do is just get a big fluffy brush just spread it in and then lightly dab it all over my face and it's a beautiful finish it lasts well throughout the day I found that it doesn't exactly react the best with certain foundations of mine so I've been playing around just to see which foundations it works really well with I found that with the Too Faced Peach Perfect foundation. It doesn't oxidize, but those two, the, the foundation and this powder don't really work well together, and I found. And it always just looks strange upon my skin. So with that foundation, it doesn't really work the best. But so far, I'm loving it with the Marc Jacobs Remarkable, the serum foundation from The Ordinary, as well as the CoverGirl Healthy Elixir, which is one of my favorite drugstore foundations of all time. <laughs> I have quite a few palettes, but I'm working on a video about this brand, so I am trying to go through use a few of the palettes that I've only used once or twice and really get a feel for them. So these are all the palettes from Bad Habit that I bought from the Hush app. I have currently the Midsummer Night palette, the Athena palette, the Artistry palette, the Aura palette, and then the Retro Love palette. I ended up decluttering two of the palettes to a friend of mine who's going to get a lot more use out of them than I will. And those were the palettes that were a dupe of the Natasha Denona Sunset palette and Lila palette. But I did do full swatches, I made videos on them, and I did comparisons before I decluttered them. So they will be included in that video even though I no longer have them in my possession. So I'm really just trying to get a feel for these. I already have a good opinion on the ones that I've had for the longest amount of time, but I don't want to give you guys recommendations and really talk about the products unless I have a good grasp on, you know, the product's quality and whether I think it's worth it compared to the original palettes. Next I have three setting sprays. I think I can finish all of these by the end of the month because they're either almost gone or they're minis. First I have the Milani Make It Last setting spray. This one is fantastic. I consider it a dupe for the Fix Plus. I spray this on to settle all the powder in, really meld everything together before I actually go in with my prolonging setting spray. It's really affordable. I do go through this a little fast but just because I use it every day and I do like to spray spray a generous amount. Again, you can get this at CVS with coupons. I consider it worth it. Also, I only have a little bit left, so as soon as I finish this, I do have the Milani Make It Dewy version. So after I finish this one, I'm going to try out the dewy one just to see if I like it as much. If not, I'll probably just rebuy re the Make It Last version. And two minis that I want to go ahead and get through from both from Scandinavia. I have the Makeup Primer Spray and the Makeup Finishing Spray. The Makeup Finishing Spray is my favorite prolonging makeup spray of all time. Works well in the summer, it works well in the winter, it locks everything in. Completely worth it, in my opinion. The makeup primer spray, I'm not, you know, a, as huge a fan of, because I think it basically does the same thing as the Fix Plus or as the Milani spray. Not really necessary, but whenever you make an order on their website, they always have discount codes, and they always include, like, these little minis with those discount codes. So I bought a full size of the makeup finishing spray, I got 25% off, and then I also got these two little minis along with free shipping. So they really throw in a lot at you. <laughs> um, so I use this pretty much the same way as I use the Milani spray. This one's almost gone, so I'm just trying to go ahead and finish it up. Last but not least, I have two lipsticks, and they're both from Anastasia. I really just want to get more familiar with their formula. These are the only, um, the only Anastasia lips that I have are these minis that came in a little set from Sephora and I have two shades that I really want to get more use out of and this is the shade Kiss and Dead Roses. So Kiss is a nice practically nude shade for me and then Dead Roses is this beautiful like mauve almost kind of like the shade I'm wearing right now but this one's a liquid lipstick. I've been really feeling like the dark mauve lip, which I know like I'm really off, it's spring, we should be going for bright pastels, but I'm still in fall, my soul is still in fall. So that's everything that I have in my everyday makeup drawer for the month of March that I really want to focus on. Let me know what you think of these products down below and also let me know, do you like this kind of style video better than, than what I did previously in which I just had the camera on the products and then I did a voiceover? Let me know if you like that one better or this one better. I'm not sure which one I like better yet. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like these videos and you want to see any more. And subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye!